Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. It's time to throw in another stick welding video. So we're going to do some vertical uphill welding with 7018 today. But we're also going to do some TIG welding on a little uh, outside corner joint, 11 gauge steel. And that reason is, is because a little, little small TIG inverter we're using today does both really well. So might as well talk about all that stuff. This one's generating a lot of buzz on the welding forums. It's an Everlast 160 STH stick TIG with high frequency. So you don't have to scratch start, you don't have to lift arc, it's got high frequency and it's got a, it's a very simple panel on here, about as simple as they get. TIG stick function, lift arc, high freak, amperage adjustment, and post flow, and that's it. So there's not a whole, whole lot of stuff to learn, it's just a small, very capable, functional welder that happens to be very lightweight and affordable. So first off, we're going to do the uh, vertical uphill fillet weld, kind of like a T-joint. This is actually the back side of an outside corner joint that I welded a couple weeks ago using little Lincoln Excalibur rods, comparing them to Hobart stick rods. So we're using about 90 to 95 amps. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of tracing the front of the puddle, just kind of making little loops coming across, across the front of that puddle, just to give me a little increment to progress evenly, keeping a good tight arc. And again, I'm using the Lincoln Excalibur 332nd 7018. In the other video I did, the slag popped off really easily welding down flat. It's not coming off quite as easily here, but it's no trouble at all. It was curling up big time on the, uh, on the outside corner laying flat, just curling up behind me. But it's doing pretty good here. Now you want to keep your arc strikes where you're going to weld over them. So I'm going to light up right ahead of where I'm going to weld, come down into that crater, and uh, come into the crater and keep welding. Keep a good tight arc. When I say tight arc, I mean I can pretty much feel that flux on the on the rod scrubbing against the uh, the metal. I'm speeding it up here a little bit so you can see the little loops that I'm making, and so you just don't have to watch the blinding light for very long. That's one pass in there. We're going to come back, come, come across with a little weave pass. That piece is pretty hot now, so I'm going to show you another technique that I use sometimes. Um, you know, you probably, if you've seen any of my videos at all, you know I sell a product called the TIG Finger. Well, sometimes I use it for stick welding too. Just got to be careful not to get it like the arc right, right up next to it. You could fray it a little bit, but this is a little pinky to thumb collapse technique. And it gives me a way to prop when there is no way to prop. And so the, the second pass, again, tight, tight arc, hold those corners. It's just about a, a, a one second affair here. You see, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Just about one second rhythm. And you want to have the heat to where, hot enough to where that puddle just starts to cool behind you. You don't want that puddle following you all over the place completely all right that means you're a little cold if it just starts to cool that means you can control it you keep that arc tight and don't spend much time across the middle you'll be good to go all right so that's stick let's move on to the TIG we're doing some 11 gauge here 8th inch thick that's about 3 millimeters for everybody else in the world <laughs> yeah. so this is high freak start I don't have to light off, scratch, touch, anything. I don't know, would you call that a erratic rough arc or would you call that a smooth stable arc? Pretty impressive to me that a little machine like this, so affordable, has such a smooth has such a smooth arc with the kind of power it's got. Now you may notice that long weird taper on that electrode. That's because I was messing around with some of that chem sharp a dry powder chemical electrode sharpener, you, you dip, you, you arc out your electrode, get it hot, dip it in there, and it dip it repeatedly, and it puts a point on it. It's just one more way to, one more way to sharpen electrodes. There's a whole bunch of ways, even sharpening with a cutting torch, and I'll show that pretty soon, too. But anyway, wrapping up this uh, outside corner joint, I was pretty much impressed. Very smooth arc, good, crisp, light, low amperage start, no issues, no bobbles, did good. So on a review here, 
uh, about 90 to 95 amps uphill with a uh, 7018 Excalibur rod. That worked pretty good. And then switched over to TIG welding, about 105 amps. All with the Everlast 160 STH. Good way to dip your toe in the water if you want to get started TIG welding. So what's coming soon? 6G pipe test tips. I got some 2-inch Schedule 80 coupons. We're going to do some TIG all the way and some TIG stick. Stay tuned.